FarmCon 24 Day 2 is all about modding and scripting for Farming Simulator 25. I'll be the first to tell you that I am not a scripter or a modder, so just about everything being talked about today is way over my head. As such, this video is more served to provide those of you who could not attend access to these slides so that you maybe can get some information out of those slides which will help you prepare scripts and mods for Farming Simulator 25. A huge shout out once again to Discord and channel subscriber Evoza for providing me these images so that I can relay the information to you. Scripting was the topic of the first session and it seems overall Giants is pushing the book they released last year, Scripting with Lua for Farming Simulator. Now I have an affiliate link down in the description below for that book. If you're interested in going ahead and picking up, I would much appreciate you using that link. The book is set up in a way that is fairly common for programming books, where it goes over the fundamentals of that particular language, in this case Lua, and then walks the reader through a very basic mod. Hello World has to be the most programmed application in this world at this point. At any rate, adding a graphical user interface to the mod, specifics around vehicles and placeables, and script hooks to extend base game functions into your mod. When you're finished, in theory, you'll be able to publish your mod over on the Giants official mod hub. Now the book is structured in several ways. First off, we've got an introduction to the Giants developer network, mod hub, videos, and other such information. we got a section on getting started with the Giants editor itself, information about the little programming language, Giants studio, and then we have several sample mods. Making a diner, making a mower, a speed trap trailer, mileage counter, multiple bail spawner, money cheat, how to publish your video onto the mod hub, and then of course, further documentation and appendices. For this presentation, the author is gonna talk about basically chapter eight or section eight of the book, and that is a mileage counter mod. All good mods have a definitive order to their file structure. Here we have the top level, and then we have a HUD and a scripts folder. And then you can see basically a rundown of how these files should be placed within the mod itself. Now in order for the mod to be recognized by the game, we have to have the mod desk.xml file. Here we define what version of the game this mod is written for with the desk version. Then we define who the mod author is, what version the mod is itself. Does this mod work with multiplayer? Is it true or false? We have a title of the mod, and this is gonna be language specific, so you're gonna to wanna to have multiple entries there. A description of the mod, again, it's gonna be language specific, and then we're gonna call out the file icon name for the mod itself. And now that we have the basic mod desk out of the way, it's time to write our first Lua script. I'm not even going to try to attempt to explain what's going on here. We need to add support to write your mileage values into the save game. That way when you load the save game up, you have your counters from last time. We need to add support for multiplayer. That way the distance driven is updated to the various clients at specific intervals. And now that we have a working counter script, we need a way of putting that into all the vehicles. Time for a second script to do just that. Now I kind of glossed over this initially, but we also had to add a specialization to our mod desk XML. We had to name that specialization and then call the Lua script that we just created. Now we're creating another section into our mod desk, the extra source file section, where we're going to then be referencing all of the other Lua scripts that we need to create for this mod. Now this script is gonna be fairly basic, and I kinda of laugh at saying that because I have no chance in hell at ever writing anything like this. But at any rate, what this is gonna be doing is it's gonna be injecting that specialization which we made in the first script into all vehicles that are defined as being motorized. 
Now, what good is tracking your mileage if we can't display it? And therefore, we have to have a third script. So now we're going to add this to our extra sources section once again in the mod desk. We're going to start this script out by defining the default size, position, and color of the mileage display on the HUD. Then we need to add some helper functions. We need to create a base display that our mileage will be shown in. Add a reference to the current vehicle that the player is in. Program the ability to display the text. Set the script to only draw the UI if you are actually in a vehicle. Calculate the distance driven based on the user configuration of either kilometers or miles. Set the actual location of those digits to be displayed within the HUD that we previously defined. And then finally, writing the text to screen. Now, I really wish I could give you a lot more information as to what was going on with this session, but coding is 100% not my wheelhouse. If you came here to learn Lua, then you're definitely in the wrong place. There's other channels that are definitely going to be able to help you out with that. But hopefully, maybe, this session, if it's drawing your interest a little bit, you might be wanting to pick up the Coding with Lua book. And if so, again, I do have that affiliate link down in the description below. The second to the last session of the day was led by Stefan and is specific to what is changing between FS22 and FS25 with respect to modding. Stefan has been working with Giants since 2016 and before that was a modder himself. This session covered changes in vehicle materials, static lights, merge shadows, configuration of vehicles, dashboards, and makes mentions of a new book related to modding with Blender for FarmSim. Now the current material system, which was first introduced in FS19 and at its time was a monumental change from how it was done previously, still had some limits. For FS25, the system is changing to allow better use of multiple materials. There is a multi-material setup. Materials with the same base are allowed to be on the same mesh. Shader parameters and shader textures are allowed to be different. Detail textures can be different for which each material and each is fully customizable. As we learned yesterday, a clear coat is being added to vehicle paint. Color accuracy was an issue still with the newer material system. So now colors are scanned from real vehicles and implements and calibrated within the game engine to properly render in game. Now the next few slides are like 10,000 feet over my head. And I suspect that they only really have relevance for those that were in session that can hear what's being said as those slides are displayed. In years past, Giants has released the farm con sessions after FarmCon, so let's hope that they do the same so the folks who could not attend the sessions will get the same benefit. Merge Shadows Tractors could have up to 8 lights in FS22 and it was impossible to enable shadows on all of them. New with Farm Sim 25, shadow calculations can be merged, but to do this the lights need to be pointed in generally the same direction. Here we have an image showing the merged light shadow effect. And I have to say, I'm really looking forward to seeing all of these lighting changes in person once the game releases. Most tractors have top and bottom front lights. In game, there is a way to define auto switching of the top and bottom lights based on the tool that is attached to the front and the position of that tool. Here we have a large mower that is raised and when it is raised, only the top lights are lit. But when the mower is lower to the bottom position, the bottom lights are lit instead. Wheel configs are now dynamically generated and the only thing that you need to do is define the tire size. The end result will be less bloat in the XML and easier setup on the modder. Changes with respect to color configuration due to the new material system. No more base material entries are listed. Instead, materials are referenced inside the i3d file via a slot name. 
there will be shared dashboards, aka the displays that are within the tractor's cab. In general, for example, all current run Fent tractors use the same Fent 1 terminal. As such, dashboards are now loaded from external i3D and XML files, and they are available for multiple brands, and as such, are going to provide a unified look at a higher overall quality. So for mods, we can now call standard dashboards that are brand specific from the base game. Additional dashboards will exist for wipers, GPS being enabled and what heading you're on, gear shifting, bail counters, exterior temperature, PTO status, and trailer brakes. Static lights will be changed by having shapes merged, which will reduce overall draw cells. The end result will be simpler XML and I3D setup. Static lights will work with emissive textures that will bring more structure to the lights. UV2 set is going to be used for the emissive. Lower link on vehicles 3 point will have variable spacing and the tools will define which categories are supported. This image shows three different width spacings on the lower links. The next two slides will go on to explain how this is coded. This is all well above my pay grade, but you can pause the video on this and read through it. Collision maps are updated and split into two different types. One will define the object, a vehicle for example, and the other will define what the object will collide with, and in this example, it's everything. This does open up quite a bit of use cases I can imagine, where select things will collide with one subset of items, but not others. Changes to i3D references, you can now flag something as loaded at runtime or not. This will be used on vehicles for things like reflectors or fire extinguishers. In October, Giants plans to release a new book focusing on modding with Blender, similar to the modding with Lua book released last year. I'll be sure to keep an eye on this and as we get closer to October, I'll provide a community post when it is available on Amazon. The new version of the modding tutorials will also be released with the Collector's Edition, and as a footnote, the current modding tutorials for FS22 are available on the Giants Developer Network. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. With that, we close out our FarmCon 24 coverage. The final session was a modding Q&A, which of course is not going to relay very well via third party. Keep an eye on the Giants website for blog posts related to the FarmCon sessions as they will likely be starting to publish those in the coming days to weeks. If you like the FarmCon coverage as well as other FS25 coverage, please consider clicking on the subscriber button as well as the notification bell. As I get more information about FS25, I'll be posting videos or at a minimum community posts about that information. We will continue to produce map tours for FS22 up until the FS25 release. I believe we are 13 short of 400 total map tours for Farming Simulator 22 alone. Take into account my FS17 and 19 map tours, we're up to a total of 902 maps covered over the last three versions. Looks like we will hit 1,000 sometimes in 2025. I have plans to make some changes to my FS25 map tours and I look forward to learning about more of the game, the maps, and seeing how many of those changes can be realized. Lastly, if you are looking to pre-order FS25 based on the information you saw today or from day one of FarmCon, then consider using my affiliate link in the description to pick up a Giants eShop copy or the affiliate link to Amazon for the Collector's Edition. Until next time, happy farming!